Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a mono green ramp deck that's built around a nexus of becoming this six man artifact as at the beginning of combat on our turn, draw a card, and then we may exile an artifact or creature card from our hand and then create a token that's a copy of the exiled card, except it's a 3 3 golem artifact creature in addition to its other types. So, nexus of becoming has some pretty interesting synergies in standard, and one of the more exciting ones is the one with threefold thunder. Hulk. This is normally a 7 mana 0 0, entering with 3 plus one plus one counters on it, and then it also generates a number of gnome tokens equal to its power whenever it enters and attacks. And then it can also sacrifice artifacts to pick up more plus one counters. So normally it's a 7 mana 3 3 essentially, making 3 1 1 gnomes, but if we put it in play with Nexus of Becoming, it's a 3 3 with 3 additional plus one counters on top of that, so it's now a 6 6, making 6 1 1 gnome tokens as soon as it enters a battlefield and then it will keep making more and more on future turns. So this was the main interaction I wanted to build around and of course since they're both colorless artifacts there's a lot of different potential homes for it. You could play it in a blue-white artifact deck or a blue-red artifact deck, maybe even just sky colors where you have some additional artifact synergies. You could also play it in a monocolored deck like maybe mono red where you have access to some sweepers. I've also tried it in mono white where you can pair it with some discard outlets like maybe Rafine's Informants with its connive, or you could play a Restoration of Iganjo, which can also discard a card, and then maybe reanimate one of these artifacts with an Abuelo's Awakening as early as turn 4, so that could be pretty exciting. But eventually I settled on this mono green build, which is pretty straightforward, it's just a ramp deck where we have some powerful curve toppers, which if we don't draw Nexus of Becoming we can still actually cast them, and then mono green gives us access to Flourishing Bloomkin as well, which gets plus one plus one for each forest we control, so once again pretty synergistic with the Nexus of Becoming, since we now get a 3-3 that gets an additional plus one plus one for each forest we control, so it's going to be larger than just casting it. Then we also have Glimpse of the Core as a nice ramp spell getting an extra forest, one copy of the Iron Crag, and then we can play Stomper on three to get an extra basic, and eventually attack and block as a 4-4. Archdruid's Charm a nice payoff for being a mono green deck as it can help us ramp, but we can also use it as removal for artifacts, enchantments, or even creatures, and then having an early Bloomkin or Stomper can be useful. And then it's also pretty synergistic with Nexus of Becoming, because if we have it on the battlefield and maybe are out of creatures in hand, then we can simply choose shooter one up with the Archer's Charm and find our Thunder Hulk or maybe our Voltborn Tyrant, another payoff here to maybe cheat and play with our Nexus, but also perfectly fine to cast if we have 7 mana and this will gain us extra life and draw extra cards and if it gets removed often leaves behind a token that will do the same. And then Invasion of Zendikar is our final ramp card, getting two lands when it enters, and the curve of Stomper into Invasion of Zendikar, if we have an extra land to play, we can immediately attack the Invasion as we'll have seven lands on the battlefield, so we can also transform it into Awakened Skyclave, another 4-4 creature that can also maybe draw a card with a Voltborn Tyrant, so a Tyrant's also great with the Stomper and the Bloomkin as the game progresses. And then our eventual curve topper is Portal to Phyrexia, so that's also a very exciting card to cheat into play with Nexus of Becoming, as we'll make the opponent sacrifice three creatures, and then we can start reanimating creatures from our own graveyard. So great against creature strategies, but even against control it gives us some inevitability, as we can just keep looping back our threats, and even just our two mana Bloomkins eventually gonna threaten 10 plus damage. And that's why we have just 24 forests in our mana base, no fancy non-basic lands, since these will Will help grow the Bloomkin. So as much as I want to try this deck in ranked, it's just going to get run over by Monorad and Boros Convoke. So if you want to have a slightly more competitive deck, maybe try some of those other options I mentioned. But for now I just want to have fun and cast some big expensive cards. So we're going to just play in the play queue for today. But yeah, let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. Not a perfect hand, but I think a keepable one. Double Charm to ramp out Nexus. If we find a different ramp spell, I can use this to maybe find a Thunder Hulk and then put it in play. Opponent on what looks like the Landfall ramp deck, which, uh, yeah, is going to be a tricky matchup since it's kind of a combo deck, which can uh, go over the top of what we're doing. Virtue get back fetch land. We don't have a particularly explosive draw. Definitely going to play Stomper first, that way if they play Nissa, I can maybe take it out with the Archer's Charm. And it's going to be another Virtue. Alright. At least they didn't play the uh, 
Two mana, one three yet. Now Spelunking. Put in Courtyard. Could remove the Spelunking with Charm as well, but we're probably still better off ramping. And there's the Aftermath Analyst. So next turn they can get back, I guess, only two lanes. It's not too bad here. Yeah, I guess uh, five mana up to six, land under stamped. So there's no real reason to go for it now, since we won't be able to attack with Stomper yet. Sack Analyst, that happens. And then step one is probably going to be Nexus, put in Voltborn Tyrant. Ooh, Tatiova, I see. There's a bit of spice here. Could take out Tatiova with Charm here. But uh, now we can maybe go for Portal to Phyrexia instead. Okay, so Nexus put in Portal. Set them back on mana a bit as well. And hit for four. And then next turn we'll see if we want to play another Nexus or cast a Voltborn Tyrant. All timed explosions, fine. Could also use Charm to get Thunder Hulk, but I might want to keep this to answer Virtue of Strength. And uh, Nissa's pretty scary too. Although still only three lands in Graveyard. So I think the plan is to first trigger Nexus, put in Tyrants, and then cast Tyrant second main, so it also triggers off the first one. Or I could just play Nexus. But uh, yeah, let's go with the Tyrant plan. So we'll get to see quite a few cards here, maybe naturally draw Thunder Hulk so I can keep Charm to answer Virtue. And our board is also pretty resilient against another explosion. The life gain also doesn't hurt if our opponent's planning to one-hit KO us with the uh, burn spell and now actually Boseju channeled. Fair enough. At least we still get a land out of it. And another Spelunking. They are missing double blue for this uh, Memory Deluge. So they're probably going to play Virtue first to then cast it. And I guess Nissa could help as well. They might have another Deluge in hand. Nope. Alright, get to untap. And we have a couple options here. Including Charm to take out Nissa, And then still play Nexus of Becoming. Could play Stomper to draw two, which is maybe better than playing Nexus. And then Bloomkin also adds a ton of pressure and survives ill-timed explosion. So maybe actually start with uh, Bloomkin. Putting in Bloomkin with a Nexus can also be powerful since it gets three extra power and toughness. But we should be able to present lethal for next turn. And now we have a few removal spells to deal with Nissa and maybe one to deal with Virtue. And that should be good enough. I guess I do have to watch out if they have a way to bounce a creature, like maybe with a Sky Turtle. So let me attack first, see if they maybe want to trade Nissa. Otherwise I'll be taking it out. Damage happens. Could also do this in their upkeep, I suppose. We'll just have to discard to hand size a bit more. Alright, they did have a Sky Turtle, so glad we waited. And then Charm, take out Nissa. Sky Turtle resolves. They can play and activate Analyst, but I don't think... That's a disaster here, since we can only take out one Spelunking. And there's no 10 mana card in their deck to deal 10 damage with 
ill-timed explosion, plus we could still charm to get an extra forest to make these 11-11. So analyst it is. Might have wanted to remove it in response to the trigger, because now they maybe want to chum block, sacrifice it, and then get additional lanes out of it. But uh, I guess it would still take lethal regardless. So our opponent's going to sack it. Get a bunch of lanes back. Gain two up to 13. But I don't see them stabilizing with one card in hand. Maybe their last card is Shigeki, and they're thinking about what they can get back out of the graveyard. But uh, yeah, even with double Sky Turtle bouncing my creatures, it's probably not going to be enough. So they just cast Virtue, kind of take it out here. But our opponent was dead regardless. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a promising hand. Bloomkin into Charm, and then Invasion ramps out our Nexus. With a Bloomkin we can maybe even transform the Invasion right away. Alright, Deep Cavern Bat is gonna disrupt our curve a bit. Takes the Bloomkin. And we are under a bit of pressure here from the Miner early. So, yeah. Could get run over before we manage to stabilize. Opponent on the skeleton deck, so we could see the enchantments next turn, which I can answer with the Archroots charm, but not before it makes another skeleton. And yeah, there it is. So I think I take that out, and then next turn invasion. As opposed to ramping and then still being a mana short of casting Nexus. Yeah, otherwise going turn 2 Glimpse, turn 3 Invasion could have cast turn 4 Nexus. Opponent had another Corpses anyway. Well, too bad. I'll do the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand is a little bit top-heavy. Although we do have Nexus of Becoming, plus a bit of ramp. Although I'll still need to find three additional mana sources to get this in play. But then once we do, we have all the cards we would possibly want. Yeah, this hand's not advisable to keep. But I'm gonna risk it anyway. Archer's Charm is not bad, can cast that next turn, hopefully draw another land. So we're getting closer to casting our Nexus. Our opponent a red-green with Glimpse, so they're also ramping. And another Tyrant's not ideal here. Okay, so... Won't be able to cast Nexus quite as early as we would have liked. Our opponent in the meantime beating us down with the Dinosaurs. Okay, we're getting a little bit closer, so a land for Nexus next turn could still stabilize us nicely, especially with Portal to Phyrexia available. And our opponent's splashing white as well, so they likely have Gishoth in there. And there's our land, perfect. Alright, so didn't get punished too badly for keeping a very greedy hand. Wipe the opponent's board. And then with double Voltborn Tyrants, we should be able to take over quite comfortably. Even if they remove our 3-3 uh, three, three portal. It's going to be a Hammer Skull next. And alright, we get to untap, bring back Dracosaur. Another Nexus. I think I still am better off casting a Voltborn Tyrant. And then do that second main after we put another Tyrant on the battlefield. Thunderhulk is also an option, which would be pretty strong here. But uh, let's go with a double Tyrant plan to gain some life, and we even drew another one. And 
than no attacks, play Tyrant. So we will gain six life now, draw two cards. And we've got plenty of blockers in case Gishoth shows up. Opponent does have the Smuggler Surprise to find their own top end cards here, finding both Tyranax and Voltborn. And now another surprise to put them on the battlefield. Okay. Double Tyranex Rex, actually. So they're on the poison plan. Well, we should be able to deal with this quite comfortably. So let's see. Don't really want to give up my portal to Phyrexia, but I guess we have another one in hand, so it doesn't matter. So we can double block like so and like so. And then if they decide which to take out, yeah, that seems fine. All right, and then and next up, play another Voltborn Tyrant, put in a Thunder Hulk, I think is the sequence. And then maybe next turn go for Portal to Phyrexia once again. But in the meantime, we get to draw a ton of cards and this Thunder Hulk trigger on the stack about to make six 1-1 tokens as well. And that's just too much for the opponent to handle. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. Can uh, play Bloomkin early, grow it with a Stomper. Oof, the Rod Priest Poison deck is probably not a great matchup. So they do want to get a blocker in place so they can't get a free attack in, but they might have a pump spell. So I might still have to take it here. Another Rod Priest, well, any opening hand with double Rod Priest is likely to win the game. When a deck is often designed around it. But uh, I'll play Stomper, keep Bloomkin on defense since I can't afford to take to poison for free. And then, yeah, we gotta work our way up towards Portal, which is maybe a way to beat Rot Priest through indestructible tricks. But uh, we might just die before we get there. Yeah, March getting a third Rot Priest is uh, not gonna be good for me. So now any pump spell is three poison, so they only need three of those to win the game next turn. And we're still a couple turns away from Portal to Phyrexia. And now they could also get an attack in for two more poison. Contaminator? That I don't really mind seeing. So they can likely make a Rot Priest indestructible. So we take five poison here up to seven, so then any way of targeting Rod Priest is lethal. Now Stomper does enable the other Stompers to attack and block, but it's probably too little too late. So do I even get to attack all out, or do I need to keep Bloomkin back? I mean, I assume that if they have anything we die regardless, so I may as well attack. And then one creature going unblocked is probably fine. Opponent takes it. Alright, so any pump spell kills us. Stalker does not. Is this a slow roll? Looks like it. Tyvar stand, alright, GG's. Yeah, double Rod Priest in the opener was always going to be rough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's fine. Stomper into Invasion's a nice curve. Hopefully they're not on a super aggressive deck, since we're not going to be blocking for a while. Blue counter spells also not what we love to see, since we're not playing Cavern of Souls. 
All right, it's going to be a Bloodseeker. That's fine. So then we'll play Stomper, which curves nicely into the invasion. Take two. Now, instead of playing Invasion and getting it countered, I could also opt to play Archroot's Charm at instant speed, which would get us to six mana and then next turn seven, so I can cast Thunder Hulk. Nah, I think I still just play the Invasion. If it resolves, great. If not, we can still maybe top deck a Nexus of Becoming next turn and cast it. Opponent does have Spell Pierce, so yeah, that'll get us. And now Liliana can deal with a Stomper. This is my home, or can start attacking our hand, but nope, deals with a Stomper first. Ah, one of your friends has to leave. And now Bloomkin. I could play Phase Down as well. And then still Archroot's Charm. And then next turn this can maybe ramp us some more. For now, discard a portal. Archdruid's Charm does not damage Planeswalkers, so we couldn't take out Liliana. And our opponent's just gonna pass. In that case, yeah, I guess we'll Charm to get a land. Maybe get this countered. Another Spell Pierce. Spell Pierce is always going to be good when we're holding a 9 mana card they can counter. But uh, yeah, now we can flip up the Bloomkin. Maybe should have done that before attacking, but maybe they'll block. Because then I could have played a land to grow the Bloomkin even more. And cast Glimpse, but happy with the Chum block. And then Glimpse to next turn cast Portal. And that should give us some inevitability. Alright, never mind. Breach the Multiverse is pretty scary here. Finding Operative. I guess they're on the mill deck. And on our side, they found a Voltborn Tyrant, Thunder Hulk. At least now the graveyard's nice and full for our portal to Phyrexia. And getting back Leer. Okay, that's fine. We'll just clean things up with the portal. And then I might want to keep another portal to clean up the Tyrant token next turn. Attack Liliana, since that can deal with the Bloomkin otherwise. Bone on chumps. Okay. And then we still have double portal to try to outgrind our opponents. Desperado. So yeah, they're definitely on the uh, mill plan. And we're about halfway, so we have to be careful not to draw too many cards with Voltborn Tyrant. Let's see, Leer is also an option, which would then let me replay Archdrude's Charm. Doesn't seem necessary. So I could get back Tyrant, cast Portal, or I could maybe get back Thunder Hulk instead. Uh, I think I still like Tyrant for now. There's the hope that we draw into the Nexus of Becoming, which is... Pretty nice with the Thunder Hulk still in hand. But I guess we'll get Thunder Hulk for now. So I don't mill myself too much. And then we have enough pressure in play as is, so I don't really need to cast anything else. 
Or do I? Opponent is still at 26. I guess we're not quite presenting a lethal here. Yeah, I guess drawing one more card can't hurt. I can decline to get a forest just to keep more cards in my deck. And then do I cast the invasion? Not really. Right, let's just pass. Could play another Thunderhulk, but if they have a board wipe, I might prefer to keep one in hand. Okay, and then uh can maybe go sacrificing some tokens. Since yeah, we're not gonna present lethal in one attack. So what do we want? Could also go for a leer. So I can uh, remove the desperado. And then I guess the shieldred's not bad. So play a land, attack, get a whole bunch of artifact tokens, and then I could still sacrifice four of them for extra counters. So let's see, ten. Yeah, that might be just about enough here. It's gonna be close. But I guess it's worth a try. Alright, and our opponent scoops it up. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Iron Crag into Invasion. To set up Tyrant on the following turn looks good. Opponent on a blue-green poison deck. Now we can Glimpse instead of Iron Crag, since this can make mana the same turn we play it, whereas Glimpse gets a tapped land. And World Priest, so it is a pretty aggressive poison deck after all. Could also play Bloomkin as a way to maybe block the Rot Priest early, so we don't take any unnecessary poison damage. Yeah, I guess, and then next turn go Iron Crank plus Glimpse. But if they attack, then they'll likely have a pump spell in hand. Take the fall, just to draw a card, I guess. And now Storm Chaser Drake, so... They likely have Ivy and Gleeful Spell Thief in the deck as well. So we're just gonna keep on ramping. And then still don't wanna take any poison from the Rot Priest. But now they can maybe draw quite a few cards with a Drake. Witness Protection, make it into a 1 1. Yeah, I'll trump. And then next turn we can play Voltborn Tyrants. Can maybe even pay for a conditional counter spell. And there's Ivy, so that's the combo with Rot Priest. So now every spell they cast gets copied a bunch. Charm will be good once we get our Tyrant in play. But they likely have a way to make a creature indestructible or phase it out. So I don't know if Charm is actually gonna take anyone out. So I might prefer just playing Stomper to put an extra threat on the battlefield, draw a card. And the Nexus could be nice. So I could maybe search up a creature with Charm to then put in play with Nexus. Can definitely beat regular damage, but uh, poison still very much a concern. So Ivy copying their one mana draw card, and then drawing an extra card with Drake. So one mana, deal two poison, draw three cards. It's pretty effective. And it looks like they have a bunch more of those to just kill us. 
But yeah, they likely had a Taimyo's safekeeping in hand had we gone for Archer's Charm last turn. So I don't think we would have been able to take anything out. And then another time your safekeeping gets us up to 8 poison. So they just need one more. And shore up will do it. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got a keepable hand. We're not really ramping into anything, but putting additional lands in play is still good for Bloomkin and for Stomper to eventually attack. And now we've got a Voltborn Tyrant to work towards. A Xander's Lounge, maybe Grixis, maybe a Multicolor Domain deck. Looks like it. And a Scrap Gorger, we don't really mind. So for now, play Stomper. And hit for four. Possible they're playing Scram Gorger as a way to commit crimes by targeting cards in our graveyard. And for now an invasion. So might be part of a combo. Do you have to discard a card? Opponent just with lands in the graveyard. What do I get rid of? We're not super close to casting a Voltborn Tyrant, but I also don't want to put it in the graveyard to have them bring it back with the invasion. So Maybe it is just a Bloomkin, keep a land and charm to ramp. Alright, drew another Tyrant anyway. So yeah, I still wouldn't be able to attack with a Stomper if we charm, but I'll deal one more damage with a Bloomkin. So I'll go for it. And then if we draw land, we get to play Tyrant. And the land would also enable Stomper to attack, so they'll need a blocker. Alright, Shieldred's a pretty good one. But we did find the land. So I'll start by maybe attacking with a Bloomkin. They might fear a pump spell. If I attack with both, we make it a little bit too easy to just block the Stomper. Their opponent does accept the trade. And now I don't lose any life when playing the Tyrant. Tyrant is also pretty nice in multiples. Could actually sack Tyrant to just make a token and draw another card. And now a Nexus of Becoming. Pretty decent as well. Might still be better off casting the Tyrant. And now Edict can make a sack or token, I guess. Okay, so they got rid of my Tyrant. But we're still in decent shape. And I think we just cast another Tyrant. As opposed to going for Nexus. And next turn we will be able to cast both. And our opponent scoops it up. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a uh, keepable hand. Turn to Iron Crank sets up turn 3 invasion. And then we're close to casting our Thunderhulk. Still hoping to find a Nexus of Becoming. Opponent with a Runa, so a legendary deck. Tyrant's not a bad draw either. So maybe start by playing Tyrant, since if we do draw Nexus of Becoming, Thunderhulk is better to cheat into play. As it actually gets bigger. Collector's Vault pointing towards maybe a Reenact the Crime combo deck, since Rona has also a discard outlet for it. So our opponent might just win in one big flurry if they can get the uh, Sphinx in play, which can let them cast Breach the Multiverse for free. So we'll see if they have it. Mirex for triple blue. And Kaito, so they're not going for it yet. 
but they do get to sculpt their hands in the meantime. Another Thunderhulk. So, start by attacking. I think we just go face. Although, I guess flipping the invasion would let me draw an extra card. Which still may be worth it. Alright, fine. And then we can both glimpse and play a Thunder Hulk. Could have maybe started by casting the glimpse to thin out the deck before we drew off the 4-4. Uh, four -four. But yeah, our opponent could still easily win in one turn. If they have the right setup. And yeah, there's the Unraveler to collect Evidence 10 to cast spells for free. They do need triple blue to cast Reenact the Crime, but with a Collector's Vault that shouldn't be too difficult. Alright, let's see if they go for it here. Alright, there's gonna be a Cruelty instead to reanimate the Unraveler. And uh, yeah, we'll see if they can keep comboing. Discarding another 7 mana card. That helps. And then free Breach the Multiverse. And we'll see if they have the build that can just win right now. Doesn't seem like they have the uh, Scab, which can get back Instants and Sorceries. But yeah, putting an Atraxa in play is still pretty powerful. And then eventually they're probably planning to mill us to death with Jace. And I guess there's enough stuff in the graveyard here where they can uh, still maybe get there. And they did find another breach. And then I guess uh, reenact the crime represents another breach. So we're likely dead here. Gonna take a while to resolve all these spells. Another Unraveler, Tyrant. They have to be a little careful that they don't mill and deck themselves with Tyrant before they pass the turn. But I guess this is a May ability, you don't have to put anything in play. So reenact Breach. Seven cards left, so we have 14. So they can now go for Jace and just uh, mill us for 15 to win the game. Alright, GG's. So yeah, combo matchups are probably not a great matchup since while our deck has a powerful late game, it still takes us a couple turns to actually attack for lethal. And that gives the opponent a lot of time to set up their combo. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Glimpse into Invasion of Zendikar gets us most of the way to a portal to Phyrexia. Or we could curve Stomper into Invasion as well to immediately transform it. Opponent red-green, don't mind seeing that. Likely a creature deck, which we can kind of beat by going over the top with portal to Phyrexia. Yeah, I guess we'll play a Stomper. Since we don't have any 6 or 7 mana cards that we want to necessarily ramp into with the Invasion. And now we can play Invasion, maybe transform it and still play another Stomper. It's gonna be double chomp here to take it out. That's fine. So they are on red-green dinosaurs. And uh, yeah, can Invasion to maybe next turn Portal. Still 
still no play. Now Nexus of Becoming is pretty exciting too. Yeah, I guess uh, I'll play that since there's no creatures to take out with Portal. See what I draw. I might want to cast Portal instead of putting it in play with Nexus, just so it's not exposed to an opposing removal spell. But it might actually have a Boseju here to blow up Nexus. Yeah, they actually do. So we don't even get to trigger it, sadly. But now our Portal to Phyrexia is more likely to stick around, so it's not a bad thing necessarily. Okay, fair enough. Just waiting for them to cast a dinosaur. A Dracosaur would be perfect. There we go. And then a Portal to take it out. And next turn, steal it. Thunderhawk would have been nice alongside Nexus of Becoming to immediately make a 6 6 and 6 tokens. But we'll have to settle for a smaller version. And yeah, that's enough for a concession. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and we've got a very slow hand. But if we get our Nexus out, it's going to be pretty powerful. So definitely one of these hands that I wouldn't advise keeping, but I'm going to keep it anyway, just for science. Just hoping to draw lands and ramp. Stomper counts. And then facing forest, probably a good thing. Analyst. Alright, so they're on the graveyard ramp deck. And yeah, hitting three lands here is pretty nice. So, they may not be the teamer build, just mono green instead. And I see Slime Against Humanity, so they were actually hoping to mill Slime Against Humanity instead of milling lands. But I guess it's still good with Analyst here. Okay, so yeah, we didn't find the lands, but can make a large Bloomkin in the meantime. I'm confident we can beat Slime Against Humanity if we get our engine going. And we're just one land away now. So we'll see if they keep sliming or if they sack Analyst, just making a 4-4 four four here. And they have a removal spell, hard hitting question, takes out Stomper. And time for Nexus. And I'm liking Portal to Phyrexia here. Thunderhulk's actually pretty good too. Yeah, let's go with Thunderhulk. And then next turn I can just cast another Nexus, putting in Portal and maybe another Thunderhulk. But yeah, the synergy between Nexus and Thunderhulk is great, making a 6-6 six, six and 6 tokens right away. And now we can attack and make even more. So yeah, stick to the plan. Trigger, trigger. Put in Portal. And another Thunderhulk. And then I can just cast Voltborn Tyrant next turn if our opponent's still there. And then we should be able to attack all out. They can eat the Thunderhulk, but that's fine. Got a lot of tokens here. Putin makes an 8-8 ooze. And so we get to bring back Stomper. And uh, I guess we'll just attack all out at this point. Could actually respond to this trigger with Archdruid's Charm. To search up whatever creature we want to put it in play with Nexus. Could also use it as removal to clear an ooze token, which is probably better at this point. But a cool interaction to keep in mind, I guess. So take out your 8-8s. 
and then still have a bit of leftover mana to keep growing the Thunder Hulk, but can attack first, and yeah, getting to attack with 16 tokens is already going to be enough. All right, so we got to see this mono green ramp deck in action. And uh, yeah, it's definitely got some lopsided matchups. It's going to be kind of an underdog against any sort of combo deck. And I include poison decks in that category. Very fast aggro decks can also maybe go underneath us, which is why I wouldn't advise playing this on the ranked ladder, since you're going to end up facing a lot of mono reds and Boros Convoke decks, which can often run you over before you can do anything cool. But uh, yeah, if you face more mid-rangey creature decks or even control decks, you can often outgrind them with your powerful artifacts and creatures. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.